we have all our components, we have our control panel, and we have talked about the tools you need to build a control panel. We're ready to mount our devices. Now let's talk a little bit about panel layouts because this is a common question that I get from you. First of all is where should the components be? Should the high components go at the bottom? Should they go at the top? Do we segment it vultures? How do we do it? I will say that for the most part, I usually try to group my voltages together. So right in this area here, I have a AC transformer and I have all my AC circuit protection. And then I have my 24 volt power supply. And from there, my 24 volt is gonna go down to the rest of the panel. But there is no right or wrong way to do it. But one very important thing, and even as I'm looking at this panel layout, I'm like, ooh, I missed this is make sure that you have your component spacing correct for their heat dissipation. And I promise you that this transformer cannot be butted up against this wire duct and it cannot be butted up against this fuse holder. So we're gonna have to shift this over. Let's talk about the spacing of this transformer because interestingly, there is no spacing requirement on the sides or above or below this transformer in the specifications. But we do have to think about how much heat it is dissipating as far as figuring out our gap. In this case, this is going to dissipate 69 watts. So we need to take that into account when we're mounting this. I'm going to start by cutting the overall piece of wire duct that will run all the way down this panel. Now be really careful when you're doing it because you have these mounting holes here and you don't want to end up over top of those. So we'll give a little bit there. Should give a little bit on the other side. And I'm going to take my wire duct cutters and we have videos on some various wire duct cutters and you'll find that link and many others in the description then i'm going to butt that up on the side of the panel and that's going to tell me my link to go here then according to my drawing i need one two three four five of the same length So I do have a dimension drawing for this, but let's just go ahead and lay it out and just make sure everything looks like it's going to be good. Just like on this transformer, I decided to need a little bit more clearance, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Also, when you are making sure that your spacing works, don't forget to install the covers on things such as your transformers and your breakers. And here's a really good example. Without the cover, it ends it here, but with the cover on, that extends this mounting out this much. And I did not account for this when I was doing my panel layout. Now, one thing is take the time and make sure each one of these is square. And here's where Rital makes it insanely easy, is all I have to do is put this one on 60 because I know that's where it needs to be. And I go over here and I position this one on 60. And now we know that this piece of wire duct is square. I've got the wire duct laid out and I could continue and get my den rail cut and lay out these other components. And typically I probably would, but where I'm pulling the components off and putting them back on to show you things throughout this video, I'm going to go ahead and mark the wire duct and drill it. So I'm just going to take my Sharpie. And according to you, well, you must have two screws to mount it. Now, you've got to use your discretion, though. If I put one screw on the left side and one screw on the right side of this wire duct, it's going to flex a lot in the middle. Now, this next step will seem like a waste of time, but I am promising you it is time well spent. Is before we drill or tap a single hole, we're going to take everything back off of this panel. Then in my thinner panels, I will use this drill tap combo. It saves a lot of time, but this panel is thicker, so I'm gonna use a drill and a tap. And previously we talked about there are also rivet options and self-tapping options. But me personally, as someone who's been out working on a lot of panels, it's just not my preference.
Now notice I walked around to get the other side. Do your best when drilling to reach over the panel as little as possible. It'll save your back and give you a longer career. And then, even though you know you're going to drill some more, take your time and get all these shavings out of here before you put your devices back on. If you've watched a lot of my videos, and you know, I don't get into promoting brands unless it's something I really believe in. In fact, no one is paying to be on this series. But we used to go through a lot of bits when we were mounting wire duct, dune rail, and components. And I love these Milwaukee's with the wear guard tips. Now, they claim to get 50 times more life. They might actually get 50 times more life. Now, the previous video, I did say that you need to torque everything that has a screw. And that does include your wire duct. So you will find torque specifications on it before we even put the equipment back on. I'm going to go ahead and torque it all down. Now I have all the components back that are not DIN rail mounted. And I'm going to figure out the length for my DIN rails. Then once you have those cut, lay everything else out mark it and go ahead and bolt it and torque it down now just like with wire duct according to ul you probably only need a screw in both ends or two fastening points but use some common sense you probably need at least a third screw now you see these black marks right here look how close they are to this wire duct and look what that's actually doing to the wire duct now there is a chance that I could pull off drilling these and not break that wire duct, but take an extra few minutes and just take this piece out. That way we make sure we get it right. It's always good to have a vacuum to clean up, but another thing is to get you one of these small brushes, they call them foxtails. It's good for little tight spots. Don't you want to take that out before you screw this in? You're right. That'll give us a whole lot more room because with this here, these holes were already tight. That's why we had to take the wire duct out. And also, if you notice, on the bottom, a lot of components, they're slotted. Go ahead and put the slotted screws in before you actually mount the component. Even though we're laying it on its side, it's still going to make life a whole lot easier lining up the top hole here. Now, where this wire duct is so deep, Notice that when I try to put the screw in, I ended up dropping them. One tip is to take a magnet. You only need to stick it near the tip. If you just get it onto it, it'll give it enough magnetism to hold it while you put it in. Well, not. Brilliant. Now we can snap our DIN rail components on. That takes care of mounting all of our components. Now go ahead and torque all the screws down. And then let's talk a little bit about why we selected certain products. And then let's talk about how we're going to wire this up. Click here to follow us over there.